Hello, good morning or good day. Welcome to Turning Fun with Femi Emmanuel. Welcome to this daily prophetic encounter. Welcome also to Monday, the 26th of September, 2022. Four days more to go, and yet this month, see, owe you a lot. It shall be fully delivered. So open your hand and heart to receive what God has sent to us today. Be responding with amen, I receive it. You will hear good news this week. What you have been praying to God about shall be fully delivered. I speak to this new week for everyone. It shall be your week of breaking news, your week of landslide victory. Here is God's memo for us all. Jeremiah 30, verse 19, part B, and it reads, I will multiply you, you shall not be few. I will glorify you, you shall not be small. That is the new you from today. You will not know smallness anymore. You shall not be poor, you shall not be sickly, you shall not fail, neither will you fall. I see you shouting and jumping for victory this week. Keep your cell phone well charged and switched on. It shall be congratulatory messages galore. It shall be letter of approval. Your license shall be approved. I don't know who is waiting for license approval. Your waiting application shall also receive positive response. Your money shall be paid. I say to everyone, permission granted. It shall be alert upon alert. Good money. Protocol suspended, query cancelled, sack letter or quit letter withdrawn, negative medical result or report overturned. I don't know who I'm prophesying to. You will testify here soon. God said, I shall announce to Alfred. Who is Alfred? Christopher, Juliana, Omolara, Iabo, Ifoma, Loveline, Evelyn, Gladys, Banke, Chinedu, Sally, Kenny, Anita, Selina. Who is Selina? Also, Oluchi, Lady M, Bridget, and Lola. God said, I should tell you, he has done it. I don't know what you are trusting God for, but he said, I should let you know, he has done it. And you, he asked that I should announce to you, your worst days are over. He said, stop being anxious, stop being afraid, and stop doubting. It will manifest for all to see soon. Who is this woman? The magic spell over your husband, your son or daughter is broken. The incantation and the enchantment Walking on him by the enemies is destroyed. Their spiritual control on him or her has expired. Listener, God has taken over your battle. Rejoice, sing and dance. The battle is over. Then if you have pain in any part of your body, lay hand there for prayers. I prophesy, be healed. I say you are healed. You are totally set free in Jesus' name. Rise up and begin to do what you couldn't do before. September 26th celebrant. Your prayers be blessed, be lifted. Enjoy good health, abundant provision, and long life in Jesus' name. Listeners, we still have the whole of this week for insightful teachings, guidance, and counseling. Let's see how far we will go today. First issue, Pastor, I just got remarried to a divorced woman after losing my wife who left with me two children. The woman is not blending with me and the children at all because of her impatience, intolerance, and bad temperament. Myself and the children are not comfortable with her at all and with this situation. I am at a crossroad. Please, sir, advise me. God bless you, my pastor. Wow, crossroad indeed. How I wish you have asked this kind of question before you rush in to marry this woman, maybe out of pressure with the two children on you, and you are looking for someone that can be a mother figure over them. This is a lesson for all other persons. Don't marry anyone in a rush, especially a divorced person. Find out first what crash the marriage he or she came out from. The best person to ask, however, is the person they separated from. Second lesson, if you decide to marry a single parent or person, male or female, be prepared to inherit the children, especially if they are still kids, and to single parents, widow or widowers, with children. Don't marry anyone that is not ready to accept your children as, as his or hers. If this divorced woman has her husband still alive, let go of her. Let her go back to her former husband. You ought to have done your research and pray well before going into this kind of marriage. I don't see her change because she's an adult. Her character has been formed and then she's also a frustrated person coming out of a bad marriage. My candid opinion is that you made a mistake, let her off. 
I hope you do not depend, you are, you are not depending on her financially. There will be a God-sent woman that will love God, love you, love the children, and be patient enough to be their mother or to stand in for them as a mother. Next, good day, daddy. How can I save for my salary of 100K as a single mother of two growing up children? Wow, again, mistakes, mistakes, mistakes. I treat issues like this to teach others a lesson. How come you are a single mother of two? How come? Were you, they were, are they born out of wedlock? You were not properly married or you are widowed? Then 100K salary, that shows you are working as a laborer. No self-development, no skill. No one should let his or her life go this way. Psalm 11 verse 3 says, if the foundation is faulty, what can the righteous do? Your foundation is surely faulty here. Do you still have a mother, a relative, or a friend that can help you care for these children while you work on yourself to fix your life? You need to acquire a skill that will make you earn better income. Or you get engaged in a business, maybe buying and selling, then you will need to pray for financial help. But please don't make the mistake of getting pregnant for another person out of frustration. You need to fix your life first. You have placed the cart before the horse in destiny matter here. All young persons listening to me, secure your life, your career, and your financial life first before you think of marriage and bearing children. And you dare not have children out of wedlock. The damage is not easy to repair. As for you, the person that asked this question, I pray for God's intervention for you. God will have to show you mercy, and I'm sure he will show you one. We are praying for you. Next, the bride price or dowry. Who do we pay it to, and what is the difference? Wow, it depends on the tradition and culture where you are. Generally speaking, bride price is a payment by the groom or his family to the bride or her family, while dowry is worth transfer from the bride or her family to the groom or his family. I hope it does not get some people more confused. To many people these days, dowry and bride price now means the same thing. Money paid or good demanded and brought by the groom and his family to the bride and her family. It varies from culture to culture. My advice, when you are in Rome, do like the Romans will do in cases like this. Culture and traditions are difficult, if not almost impossible, to break. It is ingrained in people's lives. Next, good day, sir. I need your guidance. If there is a misunderstanding between a couple, who should be the person they should call to address them? The family or in-laws or a friend, a married counselor or a pastor? Thank you, sir. Wow. My first take is that husband and wife should try all they can to settle issues just between the two of them. But in cases where this, this is impossible, then a married counselor should be consulted or their own pastor, especially if the pastor is also an experienced counselor. Some churches have standing married committee to take up issues like this. They are made up of seasoned and experienced couples. A good married counselor or a father figure pastor will be the best. Such people will not be emotional, will not be one-sided, will be objective. If your pastor is such a person, it is better, because pastor will also pray. Most marital problems have spiritual dimensions. Please don't take your marriage issues to your parents or in-laws as much as possible. Listeners, we'll pick it up from here tomorrow. Please rebroadcast this to your contact. This might be the lifeline that we, somebody needs to survive and do so daily. Join us later today on the Monday's edition of Ask Your Question broadcast, 9.30 to 10.40 p.m. Nigeria time. Don't miss it. Write it down somewhere so you will not forget. Invite others to also join on Facebook and Instagram only for now. Month is about ending. So if you're a monthly tighter, personal and corporate tightening, battle, Thanksgiving and partnership commitment seed, or the 999 seed we are still sowing this month, do so. Do so. God will give you grace to be able to do so. Never, never compromise or fail in your tithing to God and don't joke with all the other seed we teach, we preach, and encourage. In October, 
our sacrificial seed, we move on to 10, 10, 10, 10, 10 seed. This month, we are still doing 9, 9, 9, 9, 9 seed. Whatever you do that brings God's glory or God's intervention, don't stop doing it. This one is working for us. That is why we are doing it. Be a part of it. If you want us to send you the commission's account or the paper for your regular tithing and all the other seed, send a chat message or please send me the commission's account or the paper details to plus two three four eight zero nine seven eight nine four thousand. Do so now and that line only. Open your hand for the second round of prayer. I ask that the glory of God shall be on you. Showers of blessing, divine dimension in all you do. Doors opening for you, gates lifting for you. This will be your week of pleasant surprises. What God cannot do does not exist. God sent me because of you. Heaven will not rest until you are truly blessed and fulfilled. I'm Femi Emmanuel. I love you. Have a good day and have a wonderful week. Bye.